on today's episode. My attempts to get back into fixed wing flying have met with uh, mixed success and mostly crashing. However, something that I've learned is that the EPP foam is extremely resilient and bounces rather well. When I saw this little trainer model on my favourite Chinese website, I had to pick it up, only costing around $65, so there's not going to be a huge investment, and no emotional investment particularly. It comes pretty much ready to go, there's not very much assembly to do. The wingspan is some 800 millimeters, which is a good size. The length of the craft 600 millimeters. It has an included and fitted already brushless outrunner motor, KV1400, a 30 amp ESC. Now that was supplied with the Dean's connector. I don't know why anybody supplies those these days. So I've changed that for an XT60 and that's connected to the motor already. And I believe it has a beck, so we should be pretty much good to go there. The propeller is supplied with a rather nice turned aluminium boss there. It is a 7x5 propeller and obviously they know my flying style as they've included a spare. As you can see on the wing there are two servos there for the aileron control. The model appears to be available in several variants. This variant simply has a servo to control the elevators at the back there. There is no rudder control as standard, but you could add that if you wish. The tailplanes just push into place and obviously be glued. Undercarriage, nothing to write home about. Very, very simple indeed. Virtually nothing to do. In terms of assembly, the kit is provided with the necessary servo horns, which just push through and clip into place. One thing that I should mention is that the kit when it arrived was fairly beaten up to begin with. As you can see in the photos, the wing was somewhat warped and the fuselage was crushed. I've straightened most of the damage out just using an old hairdryer on the hottest setting, but do remember to keep it moving. You don't want to keep it in one place for too long and you should find that the EPP foam will expand pretty much back to its original position. Another testimony to its strength and resilience. In addition to the kit, all that we should need is obviously some radio gear, uh, a suitable battery, this is a 1500 three cell, some EPP safe glue for the tail there, and that is about it. Let's go ahead now and glue those pieces into place and sort out the wing mounting as well. That needs to be glued onto the top. A supplied little ply plate to do that. Let's get the tailplane glued on. I'm going to be using this goop glue and although it contains toluene, it uh, is, is foam safe. So it won't affect the EPP. You could use something like hot melt glue, which will be a little bit quicker the goop takes maybe 20 minutes or so to, to dry, but it doesn't give you any, any chance to make sure that things are, are lined up. So with the, the goop, I have some time to make sure that everything is straight. Now I have plenty of time to make sure that things are in alignment, that they're well pushed together in the centre there, and that the space is equal on each side. There, that looks good to me. The wing is attached simply by slotting this tab into the front of the fuselage. It's held down at the back by this little ply plate, which we're going to glue into there. There's a supplied carbon tube that goes through the holes here and that will be glued into place to hold the elastic bands. Now there is also another corresponding hole at the front there but they're not using that on this design. However, if you preferred the sort of belt and braces you could put another piece of tube through there and then put some bands across the top. The plate is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way round it goes.
and finally to glue the little tube in there to hold the elastic bands down. This being goop, we can trim the excess off when it's dried just with a sharp knife. Next, fitting the control horns which go with the holes to the front there, we just push those through. Then there's a little locking tab which goes on the other side. Pushing that firmly down and uh, that's not, not going anywhere. The aileron is not actually moving at the moment. We need to free those up with a, a craft knife just into the gap here. Now that's free to move. Sounds like it's catching at one point. Ah oh yes, we can see there's a little bit extra foam on this end. Let's just trim that off. That moving freely now, we can fit the control rod. Now this can only go one way round to make it straight. Holes in the servo horn are pre-drilled. And the finished assembly will look like that. There's only one nut supplied and it's not a, a locking nut. So once I've got that in the correct position, just literally finger tight, I'll go back and put a small dab of Loctite on there to stop that nut coming undone. And obviously we need to do this screw up here. Can double check the throws once we've got the radio connected. Here you can see the arrangement for the elevator controls and just fitting the wheels here with the collets provided. A couple of nice touches for such an inexpensive kit. Uh, the little Allen key is included for doing up these bushes. There is also a spare connection for the servo horns and even a spare servo horn. So uh, a little bit of thought has gone into this, which is nice. Turning our attention now to the radio installation and the general electrics, there's not very much to do once more. Uh, this receiver is pretty much overkill for this job, but it happens to be the one that came with my transmitter, and I use much smaller receivers in my quads. Channel 1 is connected to the throttle. Channel 3, my radio setup, is the elevator control and channel 4 is split with this Y harness which is supplied to the two servos controlling the ailerons. It would be possible therefore to use just a three channel receiver with this model. Apart from the servo connections there's very little else to do apart from work out the, the plan for installing the various bits and pieces. The battery is going to slide right forward I think I'm going to stick the speed controller onto this side, the same side that the elevator servo is on. And then I can put the receiver in this side. Normally the two antennas I would put as near as possible to 90 degrees. That's going to be a bit of a challenge here. What I shall do is to leave one just hanging out the side there under the wing and place the other down inside there just tacked to the side with a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. I'll go ahead and do that now. Everything's put in place now. The receiver is stuck to the side there, with the speed controller here, and the battery pushed right forward. Obviously the battery connections will go together there, and there should be plenty of room to get the wing on top. I'm just going to place the wing on there and do a quick check of the center of gravity. There's no indication on the model as to where the center of gravity should be. It's fairly standard on a trainer type for it to be round about where the servo wires are. Turning it over now, feeling under there. That looks pretty much spot on. Time for final checks before the off. Firstly, let's check the direction of the control surfaces. I've set up the transmitter and everything I believe correctly. Let's double check. Ah 
I've also already calibrated the throttle control to the speed controller. So now on the transmitter, if we check the elevators first, we go down, the elevators go up, so that's correct. Move the stick up, elevators down, all is good. Ailerons to the right, the right one should go up, and the left one down, and vice versa. So all is good there. I've connected my current meter to check the maximum current. And before we do that, safety squints are must. If the reasons for that are not obvious, then uh, check this out. Twelve point two seven amps peak and one hundred and forty five watts. So all the controls are moving in the correct direction and we have uh, full throttle. Let's just check the weight now. With the scales zeroed out, the plane itself with no battery comes in at 311 grams and with the battery 448, so 450 grams in round money. In the documentation it says the flying weight 420 to 500 grams. I guess we could easily accommodate a slightly larger battery pack, maybe up to uh, 2200 milliampere hour. Time to go to the field. As you can see, I've made a change and put on a folding prop. The main reason for that is that my landings are probably going to be pretty hard and hitting the prop is going to break it. So thinking ahead, put the folding prop on. Actually too breezy to fly today, but I wanted to show you another issue. And that is that the plane really does require a rudder because it's pretty uncontrollable on takeoff. Voila. So now with the pedestrian out of the way. So as you can see, the thing simply does not track straight. Without rudder control, the takeoffs are going to be even more interesting than normal. As you can see, this is uh, not going to fly. Well, it is all very well saying we'll just activate the rudder somehow. As there are no instructions with the kit, we'll have to work out exactly how it's done ourselves. There are a number of challenges. The first one is obviously the rudder currently is fixed. Unlike the elevators, the central part of the rudder has not been carved out to the same depth, obviously to, to make it rigid we are going to have to remove material from here to enable the rudder to flex. Another thing is that obviously at the moment we have a single servo actuating both of the elevators. We're going to reduce that to one so that we can use the other for the rudder, which means we are going to have to link both of the elevators together. There is a pre-cut slot for a piece of wire to fit in that will link the two surfaces together. Clearly, we're still just with a skid. I hope the rudder will have enough control without having to get into the complexities of a, of a tail wheel. Looking inside, we can see that there's space for another servo, and I happen to have found one in my spares box that even has what looks to be a suitable length of piano wire attached. So that will fit in there. Final challenge is that right down in there is the collet that is joining the two control wires together. Now the Chinese are fiendishly clever how they've actually managed to get that done up with it down in there. We don't know. I can only speculate that when you remove the servo horn you can pull this sufficiently forward to be able to undo that connecting collet. I hope that we are able to do that without having to remove the entire control rod mechanism because getting that back in through the little tubes I'm sure would be quite challenging. Let's see how we get on. I've bent a piece of 1.6mm piano wire to link the two elevators together. Not entirely happy with this arrangement but uh, that's as good as it gets. Bending one end in the vise was simple. Getting the bend in the other side, having pushed the piano wire through, was somewhat more of a challenge. Having 
having made the additional bend I've just epoxied the ends in place and we'll see how that works. Now that I've done that and freed up the other control rod we can get on to freeing up the rudder and placing the control horn. Another couple of steps forward using a scary Dremel cut-off wheel I've just gone down each side and hopefully removed enough material now for the servo to be able to move the rudder there. Another challenge is that because the rudder is significantly thicker than the other control surfaces with a hot wire I've just had to melt out enough to be able to get the retaining tab on the other side of the control horn. Yet another challenge is that the control horn was then hitting against the fuselage so again with a hot wire just melted a little channel out there to enable the rudder to move. So now I'm in position to put in the rudder servo and the accompanying linkage. Here at the local flying club that I've joined the chairman Tom is helping by giving it the pre-flight inspection and checks making sure that everything is set up correctly. My thanks to Tom and the club for accepting me and uh, for helping me on my quest and Tom will be taking it up for its first flight and uh, trimming it out for me which is a great help. Excellent. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs>